kinds of criminalities. One is kidnapping by the insurgencies. That would be Boko Haram uh, in the most in the first mass kidnapping that we know of, the kidnapping of Chibok girls in 2014. And then in 2018, kidnap of the Dopsi girls, both in the Lake Chad region. Uh, other big insurgencies that are doing kidnapping since then is the Islamic State of West Africa, Ansaru, and uh, other gangs I can't even mention. So these are the insurgencies. That they're, they're just thinking, they may do some of the same criminality for example, they may steal, they may extort, but they are different from bandits in North Central because they seek to take over the government and create a caliphate, and they say so. They are in the business of indoctrination and in bringing about a, an Islamic uh, state. They have a, a very explicit political purpose, and they look and sound like ISIS, Boko Haram, and Islamic State are in the Middle East. Okay, the other kind of kidnapping uh, is done by the big bandit gangs, which originated as a force, as a phenomenon, the bandit gangs discovered that if they they were to prey upon people traveling the highways from uh, uh, from from, uh, from uh, Abuja to Kaduna, there was just an endless number of victims who could be uh, taken into the forest and then ransomed for large amounts of money. And the reason this was so profitable is because of lax or corrupt law enforcement. They, the problem was that as we understand it, that the military authorities themselves are complicit and sometimes collaborating with the uh, with the crimes. Now, I know this is a, this is an embarrassing and it's a provocative claim, but this is what we have discovered in our reporting. This doesn't a, this is not a an indictment of all people in the law enforcement, not all people in the military, because there is no doubt. Uh, I know from personal experience, there are brave, courageous, and virtuous people in law enforcement, okay. But the fact is that there's corruption all over the world and in all 53 African countries. It happens to be, and it's documented, that Nigeria is endemically corrupt. It's one of the most corrupt societies in history. And it's corrupt from the very bottom to the very top. So whether you have you have corrupt people like uh, area boys who will charge you a dollar to walk on their plank across a puddle of water, and then you will have billionaire heads of state we will charge you billions of dollars in order to loot the national treasury. So this is a problem. Now, how, what, is, what is the solution to this? We're going to get to this. A, a broad-based call for reform can be effective if you have thought leaders across Nigeria who are speaking in consensus that they want it. That means a moral movement demanding uh, accountability from government leaders, holding them accountable, even if it means that you lose some of your own privilege as a, a, as a person of standing, though you lose your special relationship with the governor, you lose your special relationship with Asorok, but you have to speak out like uh, Dietrich von, von, von Bonhoeffer did in World War II. He put his life on the line to attack, to criticize the Nazis, and he lost his life. There is a cost of discipleship. We, the media has to be reformed. Everyone on this call, everyone in this business has to hold media accountable for telling the truth about crime, showing where it happened, showing why it happened, showing who did it, showing how the people who did it were in collusion with or were supported by government leaders.